Sumo Pugs podcast, and I've had five hours of sleep and uh, a whole lot of caffeine, so I'm just kind of like a bundle of sleepy nerves. So I might, I might be a little weird. So sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm with Dallas Sumo Club. This is Dakota. Hi, I'm Dakota with Dallas Sumo Club. I'm just kind of here. Yeah, and you know we spend a lot of weekends just beating the hell out of each other, and it is the best fun. Alright, so we're going to go over uh, sumo and anime and manga, and this is like, this is like my thing on, on the podcast that we do, Sumo Punks. We've done like several episodes about, you know, anime and manga, and just, you know, because we're just huge sumo fanatics, you know, so this is like our, this is like our thing. Alright, so here we go. Come on. So we're Dallas Sumo Club, and we're a non-profit dedicated to allowing people of all walks of life to try sumo. We ourselves come from all sorts of walks of life. I mean, you know, me and Dakota are pretty much, you know, physical opposites. Um, we are united in our love of sumo and our respect of Japanese culture. Uh, some of us come from martial arts backgrounds, some from wrestling backgrounds. Jared comes from pro wrestling. And uh, there's a good chunk of us that are just massive weeds, if you couldn't tell. So, <laughs> so uh, it's getting more and more common for people that are involved in amateur sumo to have been inspired by Hinomaru sumo. You know, it's like, it's got that shonen power. You know, you watch any shonen anime about whatever it's about, you just, you just get so into it because all the characters are into it. And that totally worked on me. So uh, we're going to dive into the intersection of sumo, anime, and manga. And so this is for, uh, you know, anime. Anime is like a window. You know, and I'm sure a lot of you know that anime is like a window to Japanese culture. And you start to pick up some cultural nuances, you know, that you wouldn't really other, you know, pick up otherwise, like just from Wikipedia or whatever. So, you know, uh, there's that whole senpai, kohai relationship, you know, that, that whole hierarchy in Japan, you know, that, no, this means senpai. <laughs> Uh, you know, you see some of the customs like gift giving and, uh, you know, holiday customs like, you know, Christmas kind of being like the, uh, the Valentine's Day of Japan and, you know, how people, you know, at Christmas just, just love to get Kentucky Fried Chicken, just bucket some KFC at Christmas. And it's a thing in Japan. They have, like, uh, Colonel Sanders dressed up in, like, a Santa outfit. It's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> and then, uh, like, with folklore, because I know I'm, I'm a huge Naruto nerd, so, whenever, like, about 20 years ago when it first started coming on, I was just, like, glued to it, like, every week, and that's when I started. There was a, a fan subbing group that would kind of start, uh, they would put like little captions of what the cultural nuances are like, you know, oh, what does this mean? And I thought that was really cool. So, um, sumo is also a window into Japanese culture. Uh, sumo is heavily infused with Shinto, and Shinto is central to Japanese cultural identity. And the rules and expectations in sumo reflect traditional Japanese values like humility, hard work, perseverance, dedication, and fighting spirit. And it also reflects Japanese, uh, the, the hierarchy in Japanese society, like reverence for your elders, you know, respect for senpai, and, you know, hard work and dedication will move you up in the hierarchy. By the way, Konishiki is cheering you on. Oh, thank you, Konishiki! <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, Konishiki was the first Ozeki who was born outside of Japan. Ozeki. 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 Ozeki is like the second highest rank in sumo, so a Yokozuna is like, you know, the highest rank. Ozeki is uh, just right below Yokozuna. It used to be Ozeki was the highest rank until they started doing these Yokozuna licenses. But that's conversation for another time. <laughs> so um, this is just a quick background. I'm not going to dive too deep into the, you know, the history of sumo because I, I love that shit, but we don't have a whole lot of time for history, so... Um, in the mythical origins of sumo, the first mentions of sumo are found in the Kojiki. It's an ancient manuscripts detailing the history and the legacy of the kami on the Japanese archipelago, as well as the defined origins of the imperial bloodline. So, one of the contenders of the first mythical sumo match was this dude, Takahiko Tsuchi. He is the god of thunder, swordsmanship, and conquest. He was born of the blood that was shed when Izanagi killed the fire demon Kagatsuchi. And see, check it out, he's riding on a catfish. I mean, how cool is that now? All right, and then the other contender, Takami Nakata, the god of water, wind, agriculture, hunting, and warfare. And he is a distant, distant descendant of the storm god, Suzuro. 
And he doesn't have a catfish or anything, so he's all right. So the two deities engaged in combat over the land of Izumo. Takami Kazuchi grabbed Takami Nakata's arm and just crushed it like a reed. Now that's what it says in the, or in the origin story, you know, just So that made Takami Nakata just like run like hell. It's like, okay, fine, you can have Izumo. And that was said to be the first sumo match. And so, oh, I kind of went uh, back. How do we go back? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so sumo was uh, not kind of like how it is today, you know, with the, the ritual and the ceremony and, you know, like only open palm strikes. It was more rough and tumble. It was more like pancreation or MMA. It was, you know, they had punches, they had kicks. Uh, they used it to settle disputes over land and water rights, as well as personal conflicts. There was no ring, and fights usually went on until unconditional surrender or until someone died. The earliest historical account of a sumo bout was between Nomi no Sukune from Izumo and Taima no Kahaya from Nara. And one of my favorite depictions of this is from Baki. And so Baki is one of my favorite martial arts manga like of all time. I just love how Itagaki just draws everyone's muscles and anatomy. It's just so, so weird. I love it. Okay, so Keisei Itagaki portrayed this historical battle in Bakido. And there's two different Bakido. There's Bakido that's written in kanji, which is, you know, Yamoto Musashi and the pickle arc, you know, the unfrozen caveman guy. And this Bakido is written in katakana, and this is just sumo. So here we got, um, what's his name, uh, Nomi no Sukune. I think he's going to be on your right, and Taima no Kahaya on your left. Well, how do I keep doing that? Good question. So according to the literature, both set foot upon each other. And set foot upon each other is kind of like a dry joke, because the kanji for sumo means to set, either set foot, set, set hand or foot upon each other. Kind of, it's just a dry joke. All right. At any rate, it seems that the two men had a brutal kicking match. I mean, they're just hauling off and just kicking the crud out of each other. They punched, they grabbed, and it's ironic. Kahaya, who went so boosted of the speed of his kicks, and that's what Taima no Kahaya, Kahaya means like, you know, someone that kicks, fast kicks. He had his ribs kicked and destroyed beyond all doubts. Ultimately, it seems that the end was near. He's got a charge up there. All right. The result, okay, oh, I accidentally skipped one. Okay, could it possibly be that the origin of Sumo Shiko was this single strike? It really wasn't, but it's just Itagaki kind of making a little, uh, kind of making a little thing here. And so, you know, broke his lumbar region, you know, dudes did it. And Nomi no Sukune, the first, was her sounding lady player, the winner. And uh, that was the first recorded sumo bout. If you guys were here yesterday, whenever we were doing matches, uh, that's Nomi no Sukune getting down in that squat position and doing that swipe with his arm. And that's to signify he's flicking the blood from his blade. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty cool. And so anyway, uh, here we go into the modern times. These are the reincarnations of Nomi no Sukune uh, on the right and Taima no Kahaya on the left. And so um, sumo wrestlers, the Japanese term for sumo wrestler is Bikshi. And uh, Nomi no Sukune, the, the reincarnated one, considers Baki and his crew to be Rikshi as well. See, there's Baki with his triceratops fist. So regardless of style and discipline, you know, we got Katsumi and Oropi, uh, Dopo Orochi, they're, you know, karateka. We got uh, Hanayama, who's just a, you know, a Yakuza. And then we got Shibukawa, who does, um, what do they call it, Aiki? Aikido. So according to the reincarnated Nomi no Sukade, they're all Rikishi. So anyway, this is kind of where we start taking a little bit of the dive into Baki. And uh, this guy right here, Ken Ryuzan, that is was hanging cool. out with old man Tokugawa. And Baki, Tokugawa loves to, to book these uh, fights underneath the Tokyo Dome where people just haul off and beat the crud out of each other. There's teeth and fingernails all in the sand. It's really gross, but I don't know, it's pretty cool. So Ken Ryuzan is a, a dead ringer for uh, Taka no Hana. And uh, he's, he's a former Yokozuna, you know, kind of a little bit of a shady character. And so Tokugawa and Ken Ryuzan are like, hey, you know what we should do? 
We should get these uh, ancient sumo rikishi, like Baki, his crew, Nomi no Sukune, and we should pit them against modern sumo wrestlers. Nomi no Sukune really liked that idea, decided to go out in the street and pick a fight with an Ozeki. And uh, that Ozeki is actually based on Takayasu. I mean, total dead ringer for Takayasu. <laughs> They're both very hairy. Very, very hairy. Takayasu was the werebear. Okay. So anyway, Nomi no Sukune, if you can kind of see what he, he grabs him by his shoulder blade. So, you know, in sumo, you grab a Hawashi, you know, to throw somebody. He grabs his shoulder blade and just throws him. But he didn't, he didn't kill him, he didn't like hurt him, he just kind of hovered him above the ground and then set him back up and said, ha ha, I won. And so these are the other, you know, rikishi, these are the uh, grand sumo rikishi within the realm of Baki that are going to fight, you know, Baki and his crew. So this is Shishimaru, he's based on Akinoshima. And this is the top Maikashira, Shachi, Shachi Hoko, who's based on Abi. Abi, by the way, spoiler alert. Hey. Winning streak of all. Yeah, he almost until he did. lost to Ki the he famous. Was he was six away, right? Yeah, yeah 63 is close to 69 was the record. Was it from uh, Futabayama's? Yeah. Yeah, Futabayama was a, a sumo wrestler from like, what was it, like post World War II, 69 consecutive uh, wins. It was pretty massive record. So that was Hakuho. So this was, was like, you know, in modern times, Hakuho just retired last year. But that brings us to another manga. Ah, so this dude, this dude right here is a, uh, he's a Yokozuna, and he's kind of a, he's a jackass, but that's why I love him. So, Harimana declares his intentions to beat Futabayama's 69 bout winning streak, and he pisses off everybody in the Makabuchi division and the heads of the Japan Sumo Association, and he wears these masks. It's like, you're not supposed to really wear masks like that. You know, sumo is a, a, a very religious kind of solemn event in some respects. And so he starts to wear these masks, and these masks blow fireballs and smoke and, you know, all of this stuff. And um, a big taboo in pro sumo is uh, women, you know, aren't allowed to enter the dojo. So Harimanada grabs this elderly woman from the audience and, you know, has, has her hoisted up on, her, on his shoulders, and then he does his re-entering ceremony. And, of course, all of the old heads at the, at the Japan Sumo Association are like, oh my god, what is he doing? And he's just like, ha ha, I have my old lady. It was, like, it, was, it was really cool. And then so pretty much the entire series is the Japan Sumo Association trying to throw everyone they can to beat this guy. No one can beat him, and he just keeps getting cockier and cockier. It's great. <laughs> And so the anime of Harimanada aired in 1992, and there wasn't another sumo anime until 2014, which was uh, Rowdy Sumo Wrestler Matsutaro, which Caleb over here absolutely hates. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's, it's no, no wonder, you know, because uh, this character is really hard to like. Um, 
like I said, some, so well, I, I mean, he's not the only one. Uh, Meg over there, he hates, <laughs> he hates Matsutaro too. But uh, the anime, it's only one season so far, and it ends on kind of a sour cliffhanger, you know, it's kind of like, ah, so I can see why. The rest of the manga's not so bad, especially after he, you know, kind of starts like moving up in the world, but yeah, it's on Crunchyroll if you wanted to try to give it a try. I've tried to watch it two or three times, and I haven't been able to watch it all the way through. I mean, I've watched each episode, but it's like I do it in chunks. It's not a, it's not binge worthy for me. Oh. <laughs> well, all right, so Sumo has also permeated other anime among the titles as well. So if you guys have seen King and Ashura, uh, there was Kyozan versus the pro wrestler Sakibayashi. That was pretty badass. Because uh, Sekibayashi comes out wearing the, uh, you know, the Ginkgo Leaf top knot, which was like, kind of a slap in the face to a, a pro sumo wrestler like Kyozan. And uh, Kyozan ends up grabbing him by the top knot and throws him and, it, you know, takes the little, uh, the little hair tie out, just kind of, after that, all hell breaks loose. It's one of my favorite fights in all of King and Ashura. It's badass. My you grabbing my hair is very illegal in sumo. Very illegal in sumo. Kyozan's kind of like the bad boy of sumo, but you know, he's in King and Ashura, so he's punching and kicking. He's busting out the ancient sumo. Oh, Kyozan? Yeah. Oh, I, I think so. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. Asa Shoryu was, uh, he was a mean dude, the demon of the dojo. He was, he was overkill with some of his finishes. It was great. He was a rather recent Yokozuna. He was known as kind of like the bad boy of sumo. So there's, see, so sumo is so ubiquitous within the Japanese cultural consciousness. You know, there was even, you know, Naruto, what was it, uh, Jiraiya was trying to get Naruto to use his transformation technique to turn into a, you know, sexy woman in a thong. Instead, he decided to turn into a sumo wrestler. <laughs> and then, One Piece, that's, uh, was that Urishima? Urishima, yeah. Urishima. Versus Luffy there. I mean, look at that dude, that dude's like, well, I don't think I'm that wide, but maybe that's all. <laughs> and then that looks like me standing right in front of me <laughs> every time. <laughs> then, like, from my point of view, it's like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is Kimari Tei right there. I mean, that's, that was actually a really cool scene. I thought that was awesome. Okay, and then the time that I was reincarnated as a slime, you know, uh, Rim Rimuru Tempest was like, hey, you know what we should do? If everyone's bored in the village, let's do sumo. And of course, it degenerates into butt sumo. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, that's kind of like, you know, the pro sumo and, you know, kind of a, you know, the more cultural aspect of sumo. So now we kind of get into like sports manga, you know, and, uh, you know, if, if any of you have ever read or seen like Hachime no Bimbo or, uh, what's the one with the basketball? I can't remember. Roko no I yeah. said that all in his own person. <laughs> No, but anyway, so, you know, these sports manga, these shonen manga and anime, like, I don't know how and why, but it just gets you really into what they're doing. It's like, everyone's just so pumped up about it. You're like, yeah. <laughs> and so this first one, uh, Uchari Gosho Gawara, um, I haven't been able to find any English translation for it, but there is a raw anime version I found on YouTube. It, it looks pretty funny. I just wish I knew more Japanese. And then Riki Jo, it's about this girl, and it's... It's more of a shonen than it is a shoujo uh, because it's a little slightly perverted, not too perverted, just just a little, just a taste. Okay. So uh, the titular character, um, you know, kind of uh, starts to grow and mature and uh, gets a little bit too big for her other extracurricular activities. So then she moves to sumo and is a total badass. Again, not in English. Just kind of have to glean what's happening from you know, kind of moving through. And so the one that is translated into English, the most well-known, Hidomaru Sumo! All right, so everybody um, who is, uh, who, you know, kind of is soaked in anime and like, you know, familiar with sumo has probably seen this. And if you haven't, you should check it out because whenever I first got into sumo, uh, you know, I was just watching, you know, tournaments on TV, you know, just staying up late at night. And I was like, man, I really wish I could do that. And then once I saw him, Mark Sumo, I was like, no, I'm going to go do that. And then luckily I found Corey on the internet, Down the Sumo Club exists, now my soul is happy. And it's all thanks to Hidomaru Sumo. So anyway, Hidomaru Ushio is a short king. He's like Enho and Maina Umi, Midori Fuji, just a short dude, kicking some ass. I mean, 
Look how short this dude is. So, you know, he was too short to get into pro sumo because uh, at a time they had a height, uh, was it a height requirement? And he did not meet the height requirement. So there's like a couple of back doors to get into pro sumo. It's called uh, Tsukadashi. It's like a preference. And so if you win one of these major amateur uh, national tournaments in Japan, they'll give you preference to either go into the, uh, the what is it, the third division, which is Makushita, or even into like the fourth division, which is Sandame. That's how, you know, Hinamaru ended up getting into pro sumo. Mind you, the height limit is 5'6". And so Maida Umi, who is now, uh, what do you call that? He's a commentator on pro sumo. He has silicone injected into his head so that he would be tall enough to enter pro sumo. Like, that, like no bullshit, look at him, he's got that code head thing going on. And yeah, he, he really did do that. He's just, he's a character. He's, he's a very, he's a strange dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, so these are the characters. Okay, you guys know Shinya Ozeki, if you've seen Hinamaru Sumo. He's the captain of the Odachi High Sumo Club. And uh, you know he's very tender-hearted. You know he's got a, he cries if he loses, he cries if he wins, and he just loves everybody so much. Even Yuma Gojo, you know the guy that used to bully the hell out of him. And so um, there's a time skip. You know, so if you've seen the anime, you know it's uh, 24 episodes long. After the time skip, he becomes the pro Rikishi Taro Tachi, and he's got that big old scar on his forehead. He was doing that by headbutting a temple pole, it's a big wooden pole. Is pretty brutal, which is kind of you know different from his character in the in the anime, you know, because he's just so gentle. But this, he, he gets mean and starts kicking ass at uh, karaoke. Uh -huh. All right, Chihiro Kunisaki, who is right here. <laughs> wait, 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 stop. Chihiro Kunisaki is a uh, like the wrestling champ, you know, he, he does like a, what do you call that, folk style wrestling, or uh, amateur wrestling, freestyle wrestling, whatever it is, dude's a wrestler. He wants to be a pro wrestler. He wants to go pro MMA. Yeah, he wants, he wants to like start beating that all. <laughs> and so that was his whole deal, you know, with getting into sumo, is because Hinomaru beat him. Hinomaru said, okay, yeah, you can use wrestling rules, I will use sumo rules, and beat him like multiple times, and he's eventually like, you know what, okay, let's do sumo. So after the time skip, he moved to the U.S., became an MMA champion, and had a kid. So, kind of weird. <laughs> All right, Mitsukashi. Okay, that's my <laughs> Mitsukashi, who is, you know, he might not have the stature, but he has the fighting spirit. He's, uh, he has to rely on, like, trickeration and agility and speed to try and, you know, so, He's kind of a, uh, what's the word, he, he doesn't really win anything, just has a, you he's know, the, the first, uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of, um, how do I, how, how would you describe this, how, how, how would I describe this, how would you describe this, Josh? Clever. Clever. Very, very clever. He figures out ways to just really anger his opponent and make them drive straight forward, because that's all sumo is, is pushing your opponent out, pushing them down, beating them for a lot of people with force and technique. He only has technique. He has the statue that doesn't allow for the force. So he has to come up with all these crazy techniques that he has to use to win. And this is him using, uh, I, I can't remember if the pronunciation is correct, but I think it's a uh, Bolshoi Tobi, which is the eight book jump. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a Hinka. You know, Hinka is like a sidestep where you, you know, someone's charging, you just gotta, just gotta out of the way. So after the time skip, he got bigger, better at sumo. He stayed in Odachi High Sumo Club and somehow became sexy. I don't know how he became sexy, but Go everyone ahead. loves him now. <laughs> All right, Yuma Gojo. So you remember, this was the guy that tormented the hell out of Shinya Ozeki. Him and his group of thugs took over their sumo dojo, and you know they just kind of made life hell for you know Shinya Ozeki for a while, and until Yunomaru showed up, beat him up a couple times, and he was like, you know what, I'm gonna do sumo. I just love that about Shonen. Whenever you know the, the antagonists get beaten up, they're like, okay, we're friends now. And so Yuma stayed with Sumo through university and he started studying medicine and is apprenticing under this guy, Dr. Kanye, who is a, he's a mad scientist. He's got all of this crazy machinery, you know, to, you know, heal, not really to heal, but to kind of put Sumo wrestlers that are injured, you know, back into, back into fighting shape, at least temporarily. So that's kind of what Yuma's doing at the moment. Oh, 
Spoiler. So there's uh, Hir Hirohito Suji, Glasses Goon. You know, the guy that was like the, uh, the coach, uh, manager of Odachi High Sumo Club. And he could, he could wrestle, but he could only go like 20 seconds at a time because he's got like some, they never specify what type of lung stuff he's got going on, but. He's got hands. He's got hands. <laughs> All right, so Glasses Kun went into pro sumo. He, he became Onikiri Yatatsuda. And he's a Juryo at this time, so that's pretty cool. That's the second division. All right, so I don't want to spoil way too much of that because, uh, you know, this, the, after the time skip, and, and keep in mind, those aren't spoilers. That's just well-known stuff that happens in the time skip. It's just kind of plot points. But you should definitely read the manga of Hinamaru Sumo because it's so good. And the ending is kind of, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but it's, it's so good. So anyway, um, we want to go ahead and take some questions. Do you guys have any questions about sumo, sumo and anime? Because otherwise, I'm just going to start ranting and raving about things. <laughs> Did you see in uh, in Matsutaro when they he daydreams about going to Hawaii? Oh, Matsutaro dreams about going to Hawaii. And then there's a blonde. Do you think that's John Jocks? Oh my God! I didn't even think of that. Oh my God! Okay, so she she was asking uh, in uh, Rowdy Sumo Wrestler Matsutaro. When um, he's in Hawaii, he sees like a blonde sumo wrestler, you know, in Hawaii. And uh, there's actually, what was it, in the 70s that he was? I think it was in the 70s. In the 1970s, there was a, I think he was in the, was he Army, Air Force? Uh, not at that time. At that time, he was a teacher. Oh, he was a teacher. Okay. That's so, how I had three months off in the summer to do this. Yeah, Mr. John Jacks is actually, I would probably say, one of the godfathers of American amateur sumo. And... Um, it's possible that maybe, because uh, uh, John Jacks was actually recruiting a lot of uh, Hawaiians, you know, uh, to try pro sumo. I can't remember the exact figure, it was like double digit Hawaiian wrestlers that he got to go into the pros. And uh, some of these Hawaiians got big, I mean, not just big physically, but you know, they, they went up in the ranks. So there was like Konishiki, um, you know, Konishiki's still around on, if you're into sumo, Konishiki is definitely still in the sumo world. Uh, he was one of the biggest guys, and he's got, well, he dyed his hair crazy colors for a while, too. It was pretty cool. Um, there was Akibono. Akibono's about like six foot eight, uh, what, four or five hundred pounds, something He was like. about, he was a little five hundred. Yeah. Yeah, Akibono. I think his real name was Chad Rowan. <laughs> it's like, oh, Akibono, or hi, Chad. There was also, um, what was his name? Uh, Musashi Maru. Musashi Maru. Yeah, Musashi Maru was a, he actually uh, became a Yokozuna, Sumo's highest ranked, and he has his own stable, the Musashi Gawa stable. was the first one. He was the first? Akibono was the first one. Akibono was the first, first Yokozuna born outside of Japan, period. Yeah, so there's a huge legacy of all these, you know, Hawaiian wrestlers. So right now it's the Mongolians that are kind of ruling Sumo. But in the, uh, the 80s, 90s, that's whatever the, uh, the Hawaiians, you know, were making their name. And it was cool because back then they would put Sumo on like ESPN. Like it was a lot more English speaking Sumo back then. These days, it's kind of going through another renaissance. But back in like the early 2000s. Not those Sumo. Yeah, really hard to cover. <laughs> oh yeah, not those Sumo, if you guys know. If you know, you know. <laughs> All right, you guys have any other questions? You Seriously, because I'm just going to rant and rave with you now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, not nearly enough time discussing butt sumo. <laughs> we do that after hours. <laughs> yeah. so that's, that's the after hours. All right, so you know, you you always hear this um, these stories about the taboo that women are not allowed in in the dojo, and that is true for like pro sumo and the pro sumo that we know. But um, I would say late eighteen hundreds up until about World War Two. Um, there was Ona Sumo, and there were women Rikishi, and they were, it wasn't like a, a sexy thing or a men's entertainment thing, they were actual serious sumo wrestlers. And uh, you can search, you know, uh, history books or, you know, the internet, whatever, and you can find in group pictures with these just very mean looking women, and they got the, the ginkgo leaf top knot, it's, it's really badass. There's a movie uh, called the Chrysanthemum and the Guillotine that goes into one of these uh, troops of you know women sumo wrestlers. Really good movie. You should definitely watch, watch it. Chrysanthemum and the Guillotine. 
Anyway, so um, that was actual, real, serious women's sumo wrestling. That's not to say that there wasn't the uh, men's entertainment, you know, derogatory, sexual, butt sumo. That was a thing. It really was a thing. It was a, an historical fact that, you know, they would jump up on like a table and just try to wrestle each other with their butts, push each other off. They made an anime. Oh god, they made an anime. <laughs> it's called Keijo. Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. No, Keijo is, um, it's pretty much a professional butt sumo league. <laughs> and so they're, they're in a swimming pool, and they have this like floating platform, and then they're sitting there just, and, and, and of course they have special moves, you know, they have, because you know, every fighting anime has like their special moves with their really cool names. And so they're on this floating thing, busting out these badass, you know, dragon butt moves. It's just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish I could remember some of their special moves because it's just totally ridiculous. But yeah, Keijo. As he talks about this, I realize how not a weeb I am. She has surpassed. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I. Oh, what's up, Jerry? What's your What's your special move called? Oh, my special move? Yes. Oh my god, okay. Breaking my back? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see. I will have to call my, because I just kind of put all of my weight on people. And I am a member of the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma. You know the bad guys that dances with wolves? You know, the bad guy Indians? That's what I am. So, I would say my move is the Pawnee Crush. Mine is just slapping people. He does, he slaps the shit out of people. I fight like Gojo from Inamar to Simon. I just slap people. It's all I can do. Right? Yeah, so we, we have some of our uh, practices on the Dallas Sumo Club YouTube channel and Instagram and all that. I can't remember which one it was specifically, but Dakota was slapping the shit out of Jared. Just like, Jish, Jish. and you can see Jared's face going for mild amusement. Like, oh shit, I'm getting this shit slapped out of me too. Oh, well damn, that kind of sucks too. Oh my god, I'm going to get you right now. It's, it's great. I gave him a black eye. <laughs> you gave Jared a black eye. Yeah, I gave him a black eye. Oh my god, you gotta send that to me. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright, we got any other questions? Alright, so give me a second to uh, get my little water here. Time for me to talk about lightweight swirl. Because I was left yes. alone with mine. <laughs> uh, right up front, we actually have a Team USA competitor. Just an absolute monstrosity of a man. <laughs> yeah, you have to get a small package. <laughs> you want to ever see what it's like to have me? You know, at the time when I started sumo, I was 525 pounds, and the first time I faced Justin Kizzer was in front of a crowd at the Fort Worth Japanese Fall Festival. Oh yeah. He seriously slammed me down like a sack of potatoes. Like no bullshit, just like <laughs> boom. And I, I had no idea. First thing, I was just locked up. Next thing I know, I'm looking at the sky. <laughs> you know what? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, speaking of, uh, <laughs> we also have Kyle Ferrier from Iron Wave Sumo from Colorado Springs. Stand up. I'm usually the guy that's hard to move. I can't move that guy. Total brick wall. We have Caleb Beckus. Yeah! It has the rank of sensei. <laughs> for fighting evil sumo. Where are they at? They are in San Antonio. Oh yeah, wait, where are Justin we? Justin in Austin. Yeah, Justin Kizzard, uh, the world class athlete, is with Dark Circle Sumo in Austin. We also have Nicholas Todd. Nicholas Todd is with Shogeki Sumo in Houston. <laughs> it was awesome. I saw, um, I think there was like some kind of party last night. What was it? Um, like a, I think there was like a DJ or something. I saw these guys doing Chico and the dance floor. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> You've mentioned Chico twice now. Oh, Chico, you know, the, the sumo style. See, Dakota will demonstrate. I got it. I'll be Yeah, if you didn't know, uh, yesterday we were explaining Chico, that's the 
to, you know, stomp the bad spirits out of the ground, promote a good harvest, and it's also a good strengthening exercise. It's, uh, it's good for the legs, it's good for the glutes. Because I myself am trying to get a sexy ass, because right now my, <laughs> my butt cheeks look like Homer Simpson's mouth, and it does not look <laughs> At least you have butt cheeks. I don't even have that. <laughs> so that, that's why I do sumo. I'm only in it for the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why do you like to the dreams? Are there any other characters that remind you of Club members? Oh, are there any um, anime characters that remind me of Club members? Let's see here. So, I mean, Corey kind of like nailed his, like, you know, especially just in terms of like how they look. I would say like Corey definitely nails the, uh, the Kunisaki. And uh, Dakota, Dakota in fighting spirit and technique, I would say is more like Gojo. But um, I would say in stature, Mitsuhashi ish ish. I made a whole spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about the spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, I made a whole spreadsheet just labeling different battle sumo club members <laughs> as members of uh, Kingdom Hearts. Oh my god, who am I? <laughs> who are you cosplaying this day? Oh, I was a uh, stroke. Oh, I was uh, Kuze Sosuke yesterday. I, my hair's kind of, I wasn't able to do the hair thing because my hair's not that luxurious, but I had the red washi in the second, so I was Kuze Sosuke. But, um, let's see, Jared, who would you be, Jared? We were trying to- Jared was Ozeki. Yeah, Shinya Ozeki. I think Jared's more of a Chidoji. I don't know, he's a little too nice. No, we, we'd have to shave his eyebrows and give him some guideline. And he'd be- Tenoji. Tenoji is gigantic. Tenoji, you got the gigantic fighting spirit. I think I would label Kyle as Tenoji. That makes sense. I can see Kyle as Tenoji. Oh, and uh, what, what's the guy that, um, what's his name? The guy with the big shock of hair and he's got the big long reach and he's always like, you know, the pusher thruster guy. Oh gosh, what was his name? I was like, he's your brother. Right, right, right. <laughs> anyway, so we have this guy in the Dallas Sumo Club named Sean. Sean's about six foot six, and he has a, like a what, like a seven foot wingspan. It's just, it's insane. But uh, if I can remember that dude's name from, you know, it's, he's like one of those guys you could only see one of his eyes, you know, because his hair is just so anime. <laughs> yeah, um, so but let's see, who else? Who else are the other guys? I turned my phone off, so I can't pull up my spreadsheet. I'm kind of <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, there's there's definitely some uh, some overlap there. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I I, can, I look like Kuse Sosuke, but I'm not that much of a badass. Like I don't know. I I, I started. I'm 40. I started sumo when I was 39, and uh, I'm gonna be 41 in January. So I only have like a little bit less than two years. So I, I'm just now starting to get a feel for my skills. So I'm not quite a badass yet, but I'm hoping by next year I will be. So. Put him on show, Tristan. Caleb. Come on. <laughs> I've fought Caleb in competition three times, and this dude always beats me. I've never beat him yet, but I'm going to. This is what you know about, uh, like, the American sumo sport. I just said. Oh, I was up. Just maybe talk about the American Oh, yeah, so uh, sumo in the U.S., and it is all amateur. So, you know, in Hinomaru sumo, that is amateur. You know, so a lot of the ceremony and the ritual is abbreviated. You know, so in pro sumo, they throw salt, you know, to consecrate the ring. We don't really have salt. Um, they tried to bring salt to the World Games, but they were just these two big giant bags of salt sitting by the uh, judges table that nobody used. So, <laughs> um, anyway, in American sumo, you know, we do the, the cheery chozu, and that's ubiquitous. Pro sumo, amateur sumo, everybody does the cheery chozu. But in the U.S., we don't really have the infrastructure that they do in like European countries or even Japan itself. In Japan, I mean, sometimes the company that you work for will have its own amateur sumo team and they'll have like, you know, these corporate leagues, you know, where it's like, my job to be your job, you know. Of course, there's high school, you know, middle school, high school, there's college sumo. College sumo is a big deal in Japan. But still, everything's super abbreviated. So in the US, we don't have that infrastructure for like a clay dojo. And, uh, yes. you know, do it yet. yet. We're working on it. <laughs> there is a high school sumo club in Antioch, Tennessee. Antioch, Tennessee. The first one that Nashville. I had. Oh, is it Nashville? Antioch High School. Oh, Antioch High School in Nashville, Tennessee. 
So we're trying to bring sumo to the youngins. We really want more young kids to just like really get out there. Because if you start young, like they do in Japan, by the time you're like, you know, 19, 20, old enough to join the pros, you just be an absolute unit. You just have like the skills to crush. Can so go to the Hakuho Cup. Huh? Hakuho Cup. Oh, the Hakuho Cup. The Hakuho Cup is a, an international tournament uh, for kids. You know, so hopefully if we can get some kids trained up in the U.S., we can send them to the Hakuho Cup. Yep. Remember, Hakuho is that Yokozuna. You probably the greatest of all time. No, I'm gonna say Hakuho no, is the greatest of all time. He's the goat. He's the goat. So he's he's from Mongolia, and so he has a soft spot in his heart for you know for sumo wrestlers. And so that's why he wanted to do this Hakuho Cup to really get youth from all over the world involved in sumo. So I would love to see some American kids go there and just slap the piss out of me. <laughs> so, Who's amateur uh, sumo Hawaii? for? Uh, huh? Who is amateur sumo for? Amateur sumo is for everybody. Yeah, amateur sumo is for everybody. Whatever walk of life, wherever you are on the gender spectrum, age, skill level, whatever. Amateur sumo is for everybody. So we really want to get everybody involved. In the U.S., though, it's very DIY, you know, like, I'm an old punk rocker, right? I used to, whenever I was, like, 20 years old, I used to, like, book shows and, you know, get way too drunk and get naked and run around, whatever. So, anyway, um, I really find that uh, amateur sumo in the U.S. has that DIY ethos. Let's do it yourself, you know, let's use the resources that we have together and, like, you know, make some shit happen. And so, you know, I see sumo clubs start, you know, with just a battle rope and a few dudes and just some skills, you know, that's kind of how we started. Um, but, you know, we're, we're working our way up, you know, we're getting some more equipment, we're getting, you know, some infrastructure built up, and hopefully when we do, shit's gonna pop off. Corey actually uh, did a tournament this year, uh, what was it, the, uh, the Cowboy Cup? And so I'm hoping that the Cowboy Cup just Cowboy becomes like a mainstay, because I really like only having to drive like an hour to get to a tournament, <laughs> instead of five. <laughs> Huh? Maybe, maybe mention some of the tournaments. Yeah, there's a lot of tournaments coming up. There's a tournament coming up December 3rd, and uh, a lot of these tournaments, these amateur tournaments, we've really been trying to have live streams. And so there's one coming up on December 3rd. It's going to be in Florida, so around like 11 or noon our time. Uh, it's on, I think it's going to be Grand Sumo Breakdown is going to be uh, airing this uh, this live stream. Yeah. Will you stream on Twitch or something? Oh, I'm sorry. Will you be streaming on Twitch or something? Oh, actually, it's going to be streaming on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Yeah, it's going to be Grand Sumo Breakdowns uh, YouTube channel. So keep an eye on. Keep an actually keep an eye on. Uh, I have a podcast called Sumo Punks, and it's Punks with an X, you know, because I'm cheesy. The but uh, we don't want Sumo Punks. Oh yeah, I'm wearing the shirt of uh, my own podcast. So anyway, Sumo oh, Punks is uh, we do all kinds of amateur stuff, but I mean international amateur stuff, and we are going to put links. Everywhere. So on Twitter, we are at Punk Sumo. Everywhere else, we're Sumo Punks, and uh, always with an X. So uh, keep an eye on our social media. Keep an eye on Dallas Sumo Club social media, and keep an eye on uh, Grand Sumo Breakdowns because that's where the streams are going to be coming from. There's so many tournaments like that have just gone on this year, and it's just so cool because if you can't travel, you can still watch the action. You can send the lot the chats. The chats are hilarious. Some of those tournaments include like the Consulates Cup, the Tokyo Night Festival was supposed to have a tournament, but it got moved due to the rain. The Mighty Eagle Team Tournament, the Cowboy Cup in Fort Worth. Is it still in Fort Worth in 2023? We don't know yet. We'll find out soon. Those are all just the Texas ones. Those are yeah, just, Texas. just We have the most. Those are all local. Texas has the most tournaments out of all 50 states. Grand Sumo Breakdown, yeah, Sumo Punks, yeah, Sumo Punks, we're also on uh, Twitter, too, that's where we do it. Sumo Punks is also on Twitter, just so you know, if anyone's curious. So, yeah, so what's coming up here recently, there's going to be the, um, the Mighty Eagle Teams Tournament. Caleb is uh, throwing that one together, so it's a sumo tournament in San Antonio. You get to make these different combinations of dudes, women's, whoever, and compete against other teams of other folks, and it's... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get my fat slaps. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> right, and then the, the most recent tournament we did was uh, hosted by this guy. Um, it was Shogeki Sumo, Nicholas Tan. It was the uh, Tokyo Night Festival, but it got rained out bad. Like, it was hell getting down there. We were driving to Houston, there were severe thunderstorms. 
There was like, you know, trucks being blown off the road. There was, it was chaos. It was pandemonium. Dogs and cats living together. It was total chaos. <laughs> and so, anyway, when we, oh, yeah. Are these tournaments usually outdoors? Um, some of them are outdoors. Uh, luckily, this one was indoors. Yeah. So, um, the, the ones that are outdoors usually, you know, we have like a canopy and stuff. Um, it was actually to have a tent in the canopy. It was originally outdoors. It got yeah. moved indoors. Yeah, Tokyo Night Festival was originally outdoors. Due to the rain, we had to move it indoors. Yeah, it was just mud everywhere. It was just just clopping through. It was it was bad. Mud soon. Mud No. It, anyway, so um, it moved to this MMA gym like an hour away from where the the tournament was supposed to be. But it was really cool. Um, who, who, there was a, one of the competitors that wanted to just give Sumo a try, you know, Nicholas was looking for a venue, she goes, hey, we could go to my spot. And the guy that owns the gym, luckily, was a big Sumo head. Like, we showed up and he's all, like, stoked, he's got his Takakesho t-shirt on, Takakesho is a, you know, Zeki. But yeah, he was stoked about it, he's like, yeah, dude, we're gonna have the Basha in my gym. This, and he, he's got one of those voices, we gotta talk like this, you know, sounds a little bit like a pro wrestler, he's like, yeah, dude, just the Basho is the pro sumo Yeah, tournament. Basho is a pro sumo tournament, but still, it, ours is just an amateur sumo tournament. But to him, it was the Basho! <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. He was such a really cool dude. And he had a really cool, uh, really cool venue. And uh, that this is also on Grand Sumo Breakdown's uh, YouTube channel. It's about, what, maybe an hour and a half? Yeah, about an hour and a half long. Um, there was the Women's League, and uh, Madison Gwynn is the one that won the Women's Open Weight. And she is the one that actually hooked us up with this video. So she is a hero in many respects. And okay. And then um, the winner of the men's division was Jared. <laughs> Jared took home the gold medal and uh, a slew of prizes. Seriously, he made out like a bandit, you know, with, with all the prizes that were there. And there's usually not a whole lot of prizes other than like a medal or trophy, maybe a couple t-shirts. Yeah, there was like a loop crate. It was badass. Totally jealous, Jared. It was funny, and, and you uh, you can find that match, and it's just that match, like on Sumo Punk's um, Twitter and uh, on my TikTok or whatever. But it's funny because Jared wins. You know, I go up to him and go, hey, Jared, what are you going to do now that you won the gold medal? He goes, pay some bills. So, <laughs> humble, humble man. And, uh, Oh, so merch. we have these uh, t-shirts, we got merch, so this is King of the Dojo, uh, designed by one of our members, Mike Hammond, and then of course the classic Cowboy Zuna Dallas Sumo Club shirt design. We also have uh, towels, they're like little towels, so when you go to Pro Sumo, you'll see people in the audience holding these towels with the name of the wrestlers, you know, like, yeah. So we have our own Dallas Sumo Club supporter towels. Really cool. And keep in mind, we're a nonprofit. You know, we don't like make any money doing this. We do it for the love of the sport, damn it. But, you know, doing this takes money, it takes resources. You know, there's a lack of infrastructure that we have to pretty much generate ourselves, you know, as a kind of a DIY oh, no, outfit. No. So, you know, if you guys are up for it, if you want to see more sumo, if you want to see sumo grow in Texas, because right now sumo is the fastest growing sport in Texas. Get some merch, donate, do whatever you can because we want to keep doing this for as long as our bodies will hold out and we want to keep training people up. We want to see kids do sumo. I want to see, you know, some Texas kids go to the Hoko Ho Cup and just slap the shit out of some of those other kids and just work. <laughs> Oh, so uh, if you want to come train sumo with us, if you want to come like hang out with us and just see how we sculpt our minds and bodies for combat, we're going to be at the Arlington School of Self Defense Wednesdays 9 a.m. Sundays 11 a.m. Arlington School of Self Defense. Seriously, it's so much fun, and even if you don't want to fight, the workout is intense. Okay, I weigh 525 pounds when I started. I weigh 390 now. That's just all So, like, I lost 130 pounds just by. It'd be a lot easier to remember. Which is kind of counterintuitive. You would think I would gain weight to do sumo, though. I'm gaining weight to do sumo. All right, so. Anybody got any more questions? We got any more uh, closing closing comments? So, uh, like the turn, do they do like like half 
Um, the one that uh, was at the Shogeki Tokyo Festival, that Shogeki did, that one had a cash prize. Usually, I, I haven't seen cash prizes, but I, do, I have seen a lot of uh, tur tournament organizers trying to up the ante on the prizes. Like, Sumo Punks, we've donated some, uh, we have these teeny tiny Takakesho pins we got from uh, an artist named Movie Mulligan, and you should really check out his stuff, it's great sumo art. So we have these pins that we donated. We are donating uh, t-shirts for the winner of the uh, Ronin, Ronin Sumo Bea tournament that's happening on December the 3rd. So, you know, more and more people are trying to make these prizes more lucrative, and we're really trying to just, like, get people excited to try to compete. Because sometimes there's absolute dark horses out there that just end up being just totally natural at sumo. Jordan Karst, a uh, middleweight sumo champion, started out just doing just regular wrestling, just, you know, regular wrestler, and then just totally, completely dominates everybody in the middleweight category at nationals and ended up competing, you know, at the World Games. So the more people we can get involved in sumo, the more people that like, you know, have this top level talent, the more that we can start making a name for ourselves. And that's what I really want to do. I want to make a name for Texas sumo on the entire globe. Woo. That would be badass. That's my sumo name. <laughs>